Hello, Facebook Live. Uh, welcome to another uh, moment with me. That was very strange. <laughs> Today we're talking about scheduling conflicts. I know that this uh, has got to be the bane of existence for a lot of you out there. Uh, we did this great uh, question on, on our Facebook page, um, and there are um, so many answers, and I'm going to be sharing some of them with you. We wanted to sort of hit this topic on another uh, in another forum. If you have a great way for dealing with scheduling conflicts with your students, now more than ever, you know, I know, they are so busy. Students are in uh, sports. They're in other activities. They are doing, um, uh, spending time after school, uh, doing, uh, getting their marks up. It's, it's just a, um, it is a, a mess. It's a spider web of trying to figure out how you're going to, um, once you cast a show, how are you going to get rehearsals together? How are you going to get everybody on the same page? I just had a, a conversation. I just did a podcast with a teacher yesterday. And she talked about how um, how many rehearsals that she was dealing with where there were just just so many students missing. And that it wasn't until uh, close up t to the actual show where she was able to get everybody all together. And that is frustrating. It's frustrating when you're trying to put together a live performance, when you're trying to um, find the rhythm of performance when there are folks missing. So that's the question for the day. How do you deal with scheduling conflicts? There are two uh, blog posts that have downloads that you can uh, click on and get those free downloads. Um, the first one is exactly what we're talking about today. Five tips for dealing with scheduling policies and conflicts specifically for directors. Um, and ooh, I just clicked on this and then there's something else on theatrical time management for students. So I'm going to look into that and uh, see what I can share with you there too. Um, and so this great post, you can go and you can click on the link and you can read the post and you can also on the post, you get a, uh, you can download a free print printable tip sheet where I'm, that is the big thing for us is that if we've got an article that there's got to be something on our blog that you can, um, download, um, be it an exercise, be it a, um, a reflection be it just a, a concise, um, the points of the article made concisely so that you can actually just print it off and you don't have to. How many of you out there, raise your hands, have tried to cut and paste something from a website and put it in a usable form? We did that for you. Um, so five tips. What happens when you, uh, when you lose an actor? How many of you have had to deal with losing an actor um, due to scheduling conflicts? How many of you, raise your hands, have been in that conversation where a student has come up to you and their eyes are down and they don't want to look at you and you know the thing coming out of their mouth is, I have to quit the show. All right. Um, that link is also there. And in the, um, in the, uh, the download for that particular uh, post is actually an exercise. It's a classroom exercise called negative positive, um, where you divide students into pairs and each pair has 10 minutes to create two brief scenes. One partner will play the actor who has to drop out of a show and the other partner will play to the director who has to react to the student leaving. And then they're going to do it, um, uh, they're going to do it twice, right? So the first time will illustrate a negative reaction on behalf of either the actor or the director. Uh, for example, a negative reaction on behalf of the actor might involve them quitting because they don't like the part that they got or being upset with the director. A negative re reaction on behalf of the director might be yelling or berating the uh, actor for leaving. And then the second scene uh, shows a positive reaction, right? What are the what is the positive way of handling um, such a situation? And then in the uh, download for that, there is an exit slip and a participation rubric. Um, so how do you handle, if you've got a great idea, how do you, you, how do you handle scheduling conflicts, um, for, uh, your students who are auditioning in your plays? Let's, uh, see what some of our wonderful community, the awesome theater folk community has to say. And I think this is the number one thing that everybody says is that you have to have, um, you have to get it up front. Right? You don't want to be surprised by a, um, a scheduling conflict. So, first of all, um, a detailed rehearsal calendar um, and a contract 
signed indicating all conflicts, if any. And if that they uh, breach the contract, then that's it. They're, they are out of the show. Um, and that's something that is so hard. Of course, you don't want to do that. You don't want to pull someone out of a show. However, if you are not firm in your consequences, if you state a consequence and then don't follow through with it, then you're going to have scheduling conflicts uh, plenty. Right? Um, work with other of clubs and sports and know what their calendar is. Know what their major tournaments are and try and beat problems before they come. Yep, rehearsal dates, rehearsal times prior to auditions. At the audition times is when you should be um, gathering conflicts and gathering um, uh, actor schedules. If you have an actor who is amazing, but they are going to miss Tech Week, then that is a no, right? Because that is going to affect your show. Uh, it's one of those uh, really uh, interesting conversations that you can have with your students. Um, talent uh, over someone who's committed to being in your um, in your show, right? Or someone who what is what is important um, in terms of uh, their commitments. And um, what is what is more important to for the community, right? Um, it's because this is another thing about you are building a, a community of your, um, be it your your students in your classes, building community in your drama club programs, and people missing, people not being around, people um, putting other things first. Um, that is going to affect your community. Um, what else? Uh, if you've got, uh, you're able to do, uh, to, uh, getting parents to sign off on, um, on, on contracts too. That's an interesting thing too, is to bring parents into the situation so that it's not just a student saying, I didn't know. It's parents who know too. Um, yep. Detailed rehearsal schedule, working with the other clubs. Um, know in advance uh, what the schedule is. Uh, and it's so funny because it's like, uh, and it, everyone's talking about how you have to be very, very clear. Um, and here's an interesting thing too. Uh, another, uh, when someone is talking about how they try and keep a schedule until show, until show week, but they don't have the numbers. Like if they are cutting people uh, um, who are not paying attention to the schedule, then they might not be able to do uh, the show. That is a very interesting thing. Um, I think another thing to talk about is perspective time, right? That that's what you're really teaching students when you are talking about scheduling conflicts. It's all that thing about building your community. How do you build your community? You 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 learn. You learn, you teach, they learn, we all learn. <laughs> Is there ever a time when we stop learning about respecting other people's time and that we sometimes mess up respecting other people's time? Um, it's not just um, identifying what scheduling conflicts uh, that a student has. It's also how do they respect the time of others, right? How many of you have been in that situation where all of a sudden, so you've done everything right, and you've, you've got a contract, and you've got the rehearsal schedule, and you've everybody signed off on it, but then a student comes in and is like, yeah, I got to work. And that is there, that they're, they're just not even, all of your work that you've put into it, they're not even, um, that doesn't even register. They're like, yeah, I can't be there. Mm, no, I'm not going to rehearsal, right? How can you emphasize the necessary, the, the need to respect the time of others. It's not just your time, right? A play is um, involves so many moving parts, onstage parts, offstage parts, your, the, 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 the momentum of rehearsal, the momentum of uh, this is the time we're doing act one, this is the time we're blocking that um, fight scene in act two. Um, and if uh, everybody doesn't respect the time of others, things are gonna go off the rails really quickly. And it's also something that uh, that you can do others. You can do as well. It's not just students respecting the time of the group. But what about um, that you, the way that you put together a rehearsal schedule and respecting the time of your students, right? How many of uh, you have been in a situation where you were in a show and you were called to rehearsal 
and you didn't do anything for the entire rehearsal, just kind of sat there. I can remember, I have a very distinct memory of a, a specific show where um, I was an actor and, uh, and it was okay. It was fun. I didn't have anything. It was the summer, so I didn't have anything else to do, but very distinctly being thinking, I, I, I didn't have to be here. I just sat in the audience and, and just sort of watched and looked around. And particularly if you have students are, who are so incredibly busy, who, what about those students who are crafting out their time for you? They are there for you, but they're not being used. And what's the message that that sends as well? Right? Um, what don't you know? What is the message in terms of uh, if if you're kind, if you're not um, respecting their time as well? Ah, hey, Laura. What kind of consequences should we have for missing rehearsals? I think it all depends on your situation. Um, there are some teachers uh, here who are discussing this particular topic that um, a missed rehearsal is out of the show. Um, and, um, and, uh, you have to actually, what I would say is how many rehearsals do others allow missed or do you recommend? That's something that should go in the contract, right? If, if it's a scheduled miss, for example, like say that a student who is your lead has said, I can make all the tech rehearsals and I'm all good for this, but I have a, um, a family, um, family commitment on these three days, right? So, and you say, okay, I agree that you can have that, those missed, those missed days. Great. Um, then that's something that's already worked into your, your contract and they sign up on the contract. If they're missing days and it is not part of the contract, um, you have to decide what kind of message it sends if somebody misses a rehearsal and nothing is done. Right? Um, and if a, a, a rehearsal is missed and they're gone, that certainly sends a message about the importance of the rehearsal. Um, you, you have to decide what you're going to be. Yeah, totally sports. Sports is, is the biggest issue. And you, know, you also have to decide on the tone of your, of your environment, right? I know teachers who the tone of their environment is the community is a place where you can, you can come and be and you can be safe and you can have fun. So the, the process is just building, building, a, building a place, a safe place and a place of fun. Um, so that means that in those situations, uh, it's not necessarily the, the wonderful, not the wonderfulness, the, 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 the quality of the product is less important than the environment of the rehearsals. So in the, if, if that is what's more important, then what, and then is missing rehearsals um, as key as in other situations, right? What is your situation? What do you want for your students? What is the purpose of your program, right? If the purpose of your program is to um, have a, uh, a to put up a, a large musical that requires a dedication, um, that requires commitment, that requires um, communities all working together, then, um, and those things are laid out, then to miss a rehearsal, that means that, that they're not respecting the community, they're not respecting the dedication, and they're not respecting the, um, the environment, and they shouldn't be in the play. Which is so hard, you don't want to say, that's the thing you don't want to say. But what, uh, um, if you're known as someone who says that they are you're going to have consequences for missing rehearsal, and then there are no consequences. What message is that giving? Um, there are uh, um, uh, students, or there are teachers who are saying that missing um, rehearsals is, uh, you know, that is uh, that they have a, a lenience for that, but it's Tech Week. It's Tech Week, and it's um, uh, it's the two weeks before show, so there is no um, uh, no leeway in the Tech Week, the week before show. Um, and that, that's how they balance it. Yes, the closer it becomes to opening, and it's all about letting down your, you know, how, how, you know, can you instill in them about letting down, um, their classmates, be letting down their teammates, being then part of that ensemble, that ensemble. Um, yes, uh, you know, because there are so many things that students are, uh, are working, are working with. 
um, that uh, uh, expectations. What are your expectations, right? And if you can work around, um, if you have clear expectations, then it's something that you can work around, right? If there's an, an issue and a student knows that they come and talk to you, um, that maybe they're the ones who, you know, maybe it's something that you can work with your, so that it's peers who are the ones who are looking out for others who are missing rehearsals. Maybe it's peers who are the ones who are saying, you can't miss rehearsal. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a peer thing rather than it's a, um, a teacher nagging a student thing. Um, this has been, um, uh, this has been awesome. Laura, you're great. Thanks for chiming in. It was really great to, um, to, uh, to get those notes in there. Anybody who is watching this, if you have a struggle, throw it down there in the comments. If you have a, uh, a, a way that you, um, deal with struggling, uh, struggling, scheduling conflicts, uh, make sure you uh, add that down there as well. Um, don't forget to click on the link where we have five tips for dealing with scheduling policies and conflict blogs, blog post, um, you know, making sure everything is clear, clear timelines, uh, respect time, um, rehearsal schedules in advance, everything in advance. Um, also, if you have, uh, if you dealing with losing an actor in the middle, there's also a link to that post as well so that, um, you can, uh, see, uh, what the great Carrie Hishon has talked about in terms of, uh, what happens when somebody leaves and, um, I have nothing else. That's the most amazing thing was that I get to the, you know, when you get to the end and you're like, no, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me, and I hope you all have a great, great night.